everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel and if it's your first time stopping by welcome my name is Anya Su and some of you guys call me Su and I moved to London about a year and a few months ago so a lot of people have been asking me on my Instagram am I loving it or am I regretting it so I just wanted to you know make a video so I can just answer everyone's questions and also get to the conclusion at the end of the video of whether I'm loving it or regretting moving to London so if you're someone who's also considering moving to London watch this video I think it will help you with a few things and yeah I'm just gonna dive right into it I moved from South Africa to London and I'm originally from Zimbabwe and I felt like this was a huge shift from the norm that I was used to this was a huge shift from like you know the part of Africa that I was used to living in and first things first that I noticed when I landed in, in London is that people mind their own business and that can be a good thing or a bad thing like I mean they mind their own business to the point that you know they're no friendly smiles anyway you don't get to greet people and you know when you're back home you take it for granted I'd like to say I think you know when people greet you or when you're always you know being able to communicate with people you take it for granted you think oh you probably will be like oh no I don't want to talk to people a lot but I realized that when I got here the people are so aloof and people just mind their business so much that it's so like it's almost like you feel lonely in a country or in a city that is filled with people and i found that i actually started missing home because of that unity and we used to call it ubuntu you know like when people just are together and it's like a big family here people are just like you know mind my business i go to work i don't look to the side it's even bad to the point that i saw a tiktok of this other girl who was saying she almost died on the train and nobody even asked her if she needed any help and back home that would be like people even if people are not really like genuine they would still be like sissy are you okay sissy are you okay like people would not just leave you suffering and they can see you in agony and they don't do anything and i think it's called a bystander term for it because people here like they will literally not mind anything that's not their business <laughs> and i think when i first moved i was like oh that's great you know like i'm so tired of people being in my no in my business but the more i stayed here the more i realized like you feel so lonely when you're surrounded by a lot of people around you and it doesn't even make sense and it, yeah, i think it edifies to you feeling homesick especially if you're used to being in a place where people are so social and people communicate and people are always is joyous and happy or even people tease you like I think sometimes you can miss that you know that kind of familiarity of thing of knowing that you're all humans and you're all loving or you're all caring you know even with strangers you can help you can ask for help but the, the thing that I noticed is I can't say that they're not helpful like if you do stop someone in your one direction they will give you the directions but they definitely don't look approachable and yeah but once you approach them it's like they just crack up and they smile depends on who you approach of course I can't speak for everybody but that's one thing I realized and yeah at first I was like oof but now I'm kind of getting used to it. I'm finding myself also being very quiet on the tubes. You don't smile. You don't look to the side. Even if you hear a noise or someone shouting, like it's very rare that people are actually like, what's going on over there? Like people literally act like they can't hear anything. And I'm kind of like, still shocked like sometimes i look and i'm like oh no one else is concerned about that <laughs> like we could crash and, like something bad could happen and we could all be like minding our own business until it's too late honestly <laughs> the weather in london is so different so oh my gosh when i was back home or when i was living in south africa i used to love the rain like i used to be one of those people that are like oh i love the rain i'll go out and like just listen to the showers or like look at the clouds now i am on the complete opposite and that's one of the things i was like i'm always gonna love london because i love the rain but the rain in london and the gloomy weather it's non-stop like it's always gray 
there's even like mist around sometimes and you're like is that even necessary london like i mean you already have a gray aesthetic what's with the smoke <laughs> you know do we really need smoke <laughs> you know the extra effects but yeah it really is like that like most of the year like for the most part of the year and last summer which was my first summer in london it was not even that warm you know it would rain every other day so i didn't even get to enjoy summer fortunately i was traveling a lot so i got to escape and really feel the heat elsewhere but in london it was so so bad and it gets so bad to the point that other people actually get sick like they get seasonal depression people have to be on vitamins you know so that they can have that vitamin d in their body so that their body is not you know getting sad or having the effects of, of not having the sun so that's one thing i never i used to take for granted i was like better how bad can it be it's really really bad like sometimes i've also realized that when i'm sad it's probably because of the weather and i didn't know that i just started feeling so sad after moving here and i was like what is going on and my mind was just feeling all clouded and i was like you know what it's because there are clouds outside <laughs> someone was like you know what it's because it's actually overcast it's cloudy or everywhere so now your mind is not feeling as refreshed and you probably are lacking the vitamin d that you are used to constantly taking so yeah but i don't really take the vitamins but yeah i i heard that most people like they have to take vitamins especially if you relocate at an older age and you're not used to the type of weather this side you have to take those vitamins to kind of stay you know rejuvenized and to have that those vitamins that you would usually get from the sun but yeah it's so bad <laughs> but i think it's something that you can get used to in a sense but one thing I noticed is that it's hard to go out when the weather is like that. It's hard to do anything. It's hard to go anywhere because it's raining. Like, would you want to be outside in the rain and cold? Like, it'll be freezing cold. And on top of that, it's raining. So it's hard for, 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 for anyone to go out. And so you find that people barely go out when it's like that and you stay indoors. And that can feel suffocating because when it's like winter, the days are also short so it gets dark like around 4 30 pm at the peak of winter and it's cold and it's raining come on that's a lot but one thing i realize is that if you truly want to enjoy living in london you gotta adapt if you don't adapt you will not last like you, you just won't last here you know you will just want to go back home but if you are dedicated to wanting to move to london you have to be aware of these things and tell yourself i'm gonna adapt like i used to also always feel like oh my gosh why does it have to rain all the time until i realized that the people who are from here originally and grew up here they go out even in the winter they layer they put the cots and when they get to where they're going it's warm inside there's always heating in restaurants always heating in hotels wherever you be like pubs it's always warm and people actually stand outside because they're so used to the weather and they drink and they have after work drinks even in the coldest of weathers like i think i have videos of when i first moved and i was going to this other client site and i passed through pubs and i would always find people there and it would be so full even in the rain like the rain in london does not pour hard it's always like in trees or rain so maybe that's a good thing because then you know that you'll never be pulled pulled like wet it's rarely ever that harsh hard rain so at least i guess that's why people are able to just walk in the rain without umbrellas that i cannot adapt to <laughs> like i'll always need my umbrella but i realize people here don't even carry umbrellas they they just so used to it so if you're gonna move here then you must know that you have to get used to some of these things or at least try to adapt to it think of it like as in your new culture or your new way of living and maybe you'll be able to make it another thing about london uh, that i do not like is the cost of living oh my gosh i don't even know where to start first of all the cost of living is so high that the rent you pay in london is usually between one third to 
half of your income like for most for most people like for the middle middle class or the just the regular earning pay not the people that are in the higher tax brackets you know for regular citizens that are earning a normal salary if you want a proper home with just you know the basics heating and all of that you probably pay between one third and you know half of your salary that will all go to be found that i was like oh my gosh and i tried searching for different places but all of them like the ones at least that i knew i would be comfortable in they all had the same price range and it came to a point where it was just like you know what it is what it is like this is what you have to accept when you're moving to london and another thing is it's actually very hard to secure accommodation so if you're thinking of moving to london you better start researching months before you move you know and what i did is that i lived in a hotel for the first month and i was searching for apartments even before i moved and i couldn't find any and then once i moved i kept searching for apartments and this apartment that we got we had been told that it's not uh, available anymore until one week before like we were about to extend our stay in the hotel and then they called us they were like i think someone the person was supposed to move in cancelled and then it was available so we just took it we didn't even come to view it we're just like at this point the way rentals like the way um apartments are so hard to secure i was like mm -mm. i've seen the videos we've done a lot of communication with these people i'm taking this apartment but the good the good thing was we we're also recommended by people who stayed here so we knew that the apartment was beautiful and it had all those amenities like the gym and everything so we're, we're happy with with what we were hearing from the people who had recommended us to the apartment so once it was available we're just like we are taking it and it's so hard also to find apartments with like with closets i was like what you think that london is like you know very up there with you know modernization but it's only the new buildings that have closets like i, mean, I don't know correct me if i'm wrong guys but i was on <laughs> i was on a lot of rental websites and i couldn't find apartments with closets until we found the one that i'm living in now and for me that was a deal breaker like how am i gonna fit my clothes in a chest of drawers no that cannot be you know <laughs> like for us back home like in south africa having a wardrobe or a closet is like a norm you know if you if it's not if it doesn't come as part of the house you buy it so i was like in london there's a lot of things like it's already expensive and you still need to buy a closet and i mean the transportation to the apartment and the rooms as well like the space in the rooms were small so i was like even if you buy a closet it probably won't fit in the room so the room needs to be big enough for it to fit the closet so it was a lot of things to do and i know i'm like going into a lot but like uh, it was a lot to find rentals you just have to pray and hope for the best <laughs> because honestly that's what we did we just prayed and hoped for the best until it was like almost last minute and then it just came miraculously but yeah back to cost of living i've just explained to you how the rentals are very expensive and on top of that you need to pay things like council tax which is based on the uh, like the space that your apartment takes so and it also is based on the zone in london that you stay so there are, there are different zones like zone a b c d so depending on the zone that you're in of course the closer you are to london the more your council tax will be and then also based on your apartment size so that is expensive and then you have heating heating you obviously need it in winter because you cannot survive without heating this side and that also is expensive but i have i've heard from other people that it depends on where you're located so some other places their heating is very affordable but well where i stay and other places that i've heard of it's not really affordable and it also depends on how how much you use and if you 
are living with someone that uses more heating then if, if you are using more heating in your household then you have to pay more heating of course and it's like heating of the flooring so you can imagine how much uh, heating it takes to heat up a floor <laughs> but yeah and you also have to pay things like national health insurance because on this side in London you don't in the UK you don't do medical aids and everything is like taken from your salary and then you just then go to the hospitals for wow that okay I'm not gonna comment much on that because that then leads me to like all the complaints I'm hearing about hospitals not being efficient like people I had my friend her husband had a broken ankle and they told him to go back home until they have an appointment so I don't really know how helpful the insurance is but yeah it's one of the things that you pay for from your salary and then when you go to get treated wherever you go you just need your national insurance to be able to be treated without making any payment so yeah that is very expensive is taxation i did a calculation the other day i was like oh my gosh taxation is almost one third of my salary like what are you even talking about <laughs> i was like what are you even talking about okay maybe i'm exaggerating but it's a big chunk like a very big chunk of your salary will just go to tax but I guess it, that's what it takes to maintain such a big city and keep it functioning and efficient, tra public transport and everything. Yeah, but taxation, you will feel it. I mean, if you get a job, once you get that pay slip or if you can do like a calculation, you'll be able to see how much you'll be going to tax. They are like tax calculators online. So if you're if you got a job here and you're trying to find out what will your net payment be, like just search on, on Google, you know, net payment, net salary in the UK or something like that. You see a lot of apps there that will help you. Like they'll just ask you for your annual salary, pay your your offer letter and then they'll be able to tell you that after national health insurance and after taxation how much will your take home be annually and monthly so yeah i guess that'll be useful if you're someone who already has a job offer and you're trying to see whether it's gonna be sufficient for you <laughs> thing that goes without saying is that you will feel homesick you will miss your family and you actually miss home deeper than you did when you were there and allow me to explain this right so i realized that when i moved here i started listening to more shona songs whilst walking through the streets i feel like it's the it's the trying to to reach out to something familiar because everything is so different like your mind almost is like i can't take all of this like i need something to be serenading me into this new life <laughs> well at least that's how it was for me you know i had to like walk through the streets of london listening to too cool or one of those old and day music artists so that i would just ease into it and it took me a very long time to just accept that i lived in london like i feel like even a few months ago i was still like do i live in london or am i still gonna wake up and go back home am i in like in boarding school and at the end of the term i'm gonna be able to go back home <laughs> i had to tell myself hey girl you are living in london okay and i feel like nowadays i'm getting better at it i've made efforts to like try and really cement myself because I know I'm not leaving anytime soon so I might as well feel at home if I decide to then move I don't want to regret and feel like I, I was just leaving like I'm on a bus stop you know like when you have all your things packed and you're like I might go back you know I need to just let it go and actually be present be in the moment and enjoy the city enjoy the country for what it is and then if i then decide to move away from it at some point i will do so without any regret i feel like i've been talking about a lot of bad things <laughs> honestly i am trying to find positives and one of the most positive things about moving to london for me personally has been the ability to travel London has 
or the United Kingdom in general. Like I was, I've been able to travel to more European countries from here than I would have been doing if I was at home. So the Schengen visa and everything, I feel like it's easier to get when you have the BRP and you're like a valid permanent resident or a valid resident of the United Kingdom than it, it than it is when you're back home like i than it is when you're back home i don't know like people have different experiences but i i'm from zimbabwe so for me like they want to see a lot of things that i feel like now when because i'm here they don't really ask for it because they know like i'm here legitimately and i work here i'm not trying to come to their country and not leave or anything like that because i mean hello i'm working in the uk so it's been fairly easy for me to get the schengen visa which is great and i've been able to travel i feel like that was the first thing i wanted to do like it's almost like i i dropped into the uk and i was like yeah i'm ready to jump to the next country <laughs> and i know it was hard to secure appointments because apparently that we are there's a lot of um nationalities here like there are a lot of experts who live in london so the appointments with spots would always be sold out because everybody wants to travel in summer so i had to there was, there was a bit of a struggle to get the first appointment but i think once i got it like in may things were a bit better i know like going up to like june the appointments are usually very hard to secure but after that then they become easier you can find slots without the hassle but i had to be on their website like all the time checking for an appointment until i got one and then i managed to secure my appointment and i got my Schengen visa and so far i've already been to i think my first trip was to switzerland geneva i also went to annecy in france and i went to paris and then i also went to italy i did rome venice and milan in italy and then i went to netherlands and i, I went to amsterdam and the hague where they i went to visit my uncle who stays in the hague and i also went back to paris like i'm mostly like going back and forth to paris you know disneyland and all of those things which is awesome because i've always been a travel enthusiast and i've always found that it was a lot more money to travel from south africa because one you're traveling against the euro or the pound and you know that the currency is gonna be like the currency exchange rate is gonna be it's gonna mean that you're gonna have to pay more in rents to, to to travel but here on this side first of all the plane tickets are much cheaper and if you are really really like traveling in the middle of the week you can even find plane tickets for like 30 pounds which is equivalent to 600 or even less 600 rands so that's good like that's a bargain you know it just depends on when you're traveling if you book earlier you can find literally a return flight for 60 pounds and i mean i don't know i don't know like i don't know if it can get better than that you know and that is to different countries you'll be taking off different countries off of your passport and once you have the one schengen visa you'll be able to go to different european countries that's why you see a lot of people who move here and they get schengen visas they travel a lot because first of all the countries are close to each other and once you just get a schengen visa for one of the schengen countries you're able to go to other different countries so and you don't even get stamped i realized that because i always used to go back and forth between switzerland and france so once i landed in switzerland i wouldn't get stamped to get into france like you're just walking down the road no one cares <laughs> and it even was like that oh yes i forgot to mention i also went to canary islands which is part of spain but it's like close to morocco and i realized that when i got my schengen visa i got my schengen visa with switzerland but i flew into spain first no one asked me why i was flying to spain and when i have a switzerland schengen visa they were just like is it valid welcome and then i spent my time there from there i went to germany oh my gosh i'm forgetting all these travel destinations that i've been to <laughs> yeah from uh spain uh canary islands i flew to germany uh what was the name of the city 
berlin yes i went to berlin for a few days after christmas yeah because i went to uh, spain for my birthday and then i went to berlin after christmas after my birthday but it was all part of the same birthday celebration kind of trip and yeah no one even asked me like why you are you haven't been to switzerland yet so but i do advise that you do start by going to the country that you obtain the schengen visa from just in case you come across someone who's different from uh, the people that i was coming across because i know sometimes you can depend on the immigration officer that is admitting you into the country so yeah don't say i didn't warn you on that one so that is like one of my favorite things you guys can see how my face is lighting up when i'm talking about traveling i absolutely love traveling and i cannot wait to travel some more i'm so grateful that i've already traveled to a lot of countries i feel like now i'm more like let me relax and also enjoy the united kingdom because honey there is a lot to see here as well and i haven't seen much of it but i think i've been to two different cities apart from london and that's uh brighton and birmingham yeah those two and i feel like there's a lot more to see <laughs> But yeah, that's one of my favorite things about moving to London, you can travel. Another thing that I really, really love about moving to London is that it has forced me to grow. Personally, I was living with my mom back in South Africa and I was so dependent on it without even realizing it. Like my mom would literally be the one to be in charge of all the, you know, bills. Like I would contribute some money, of course, but she was in charge of a lot of things, even just buying groceries. To the point that when I came this time, I realized that I have to do these things by myself. Oof. <laughs> I have to do everything by myself. It was kind of a wake up call. At first, I, I, I didn't understand why I was feeling so uncomfortable until I realized that, wait, I had been staying, I had been a mama's girl for the longest time. So I had been now, I had now to grow out of that. So it forced me to grow in that sense. But I feel like it just doesn't make you grow if you were like staying with your parents. I feel like in general because it's such a big city different things like the mode of transport is different like the way the trains connect and for you to get to one point to another you need to go through different routes and you need to know the different lines you need to know how to follow the the trains within the tubes all of that just forces you to be more jacked up you know you, you just become you can't glaze around in London like there's no room for laziness everything requires you to be jacked up that's how I feel at least back home it's so simple you just take an oba or you take this and then you ask that and you ask this person here everything is so fast paced that you have to also be fast paced otherwise you will not be able to survive here so it forced me to grow in that sense like it's a very big city i'm still taking it bit by bit but i definitely can see that my mind is shifting i'm more like you know i'm, I'm more keen to learn new things i'm more keen to understand things like you can resist the learning but it will never work in your favor like you will have to learn if you want to really thrive and be happy in this space because it's just a lot it's just a lot <laughs> the city itself is so huge like my mom came over to visit and my mom is someone who's very good with directions back home like in south africa she knows where north is southwest is at any point she knows the roads that she takes even if it's the first time and she knows what part of the country like in terms of directions and the map she will be when she drives to a new area but when she got here she was like no <laughs> which side are we again are we on the west because that's how big it is like it's just so big <laughs> and i feel like sometimes people are just like oh, london like it's just another city it's yes it is another city but it's very big and you need to come here knowing that it's big so that you're not overwhelmed or shocked by how big it is and you might even go a year without covering all of it like me like i love adventure i love traveling and i love discovering new spots but i got overwhelmed at some point i was like i'm not even gonna look up anything because there's there's always something to do always a nice restaurant to check out always something cute always something some activity happening 
you cannot keep up like you just have to accept that it's big and choose whatever you want to choose and i feel like at first i wanted to be like how i was in south africa researching the nicest places and going there but here most of the places are nice most of the places are fancy and i'm into fancy like looking places and spaces most of the places are fancy i just have to decide which one i want to go to and have the money for it oh yes that's another thing going out in london is expensive and you have to have a proper budget for it and make sure you keep monitoring that budget so that you don't overspend before the month ends that is a big city but it's beautiful and if you're someone who loves adventure who loves it who loves exploring you will definitely enjoy it how could i forget one of the good things about moving here is, is that there's no load shedding there is no load shedding the electricity is always on day night and you never see anywhere where there's no load shedding and it's generally a bit more safe than back home the crime is there and it's increasing apparently but I'm, I feel like it's still much, much better than back home because back home, if you are in the town, like in the CBD, let's compare it to Johannesburg, per se. Like if you're in Johannesburg, someone can walk up to you and say, give me your phone. And I feel like in London, it's either pickpockets or the guys that are like on the bicycles and they just come and they take away your phone. So you need to be careful, but it won't be violent to the point that you get shot or like you get stabbed or someone literally intimidates you into like taking or handing over your possessions. So I feel like it's it's quite safe. I, I barely hear of hijackings and all that violence with but I feel like there are spots in London that do have that. But generally like in the normal city centers and work areas or like in the normal suburbs that are not part of, you know, obviously every city has a has an area or suburbs or like <laughs> what you call this area where it's just dangerous you just know them so if you like you like you like we know like america has you know the bronx and all those places that you should avoid i'm sure london has some i'm not quite familiar with them yet but where i've been located where i've been situated where i work where i live it's been quite safe uh, the only thing I've been warned against is like holding your phone in the street without being like extra clutchy on it. That's something that people have ad advised me not to do because someone can literally come and they're riding a bicycle and they grab your phone and they go just like that. Being in London has taught me that there are so many opportunities to making it. I went to this other district, uh, I went to this other um, shop called Harrods. It's like a shopping mall looking type but it's not really a shopping mall it's like one shop which has a lot of designer brands in them and i was like oh, how is it so full like people are always buying designer every day every now and again it's always full and i was like is everybody working a better job than an auditor you know or is everybody working at a job that pays from an auditor salary or higher because i'm an auditor i was just trying to analyze and i realized that a lot of people here don't really do a lot of manual hard work they're entrepreneurs they're making money online they're doing all these things that can substantiate their income to the point that the person who's doing the nine to five or like auditors we work overtime we work long hours but you know their salary compared to someone who's doing the manual hard work thinking and all of that is a lot not salary let's call it income because a lot of people here have passive income they've learned how to invest they've learned how to do all these things that can make them earn money in their sleep so i feel like if you're someone who likes networking and who's into investing and all of those things this is like the playground for you to learn how to make money and just grow yourself to a point where you make money in your sleep but one thing i also realized is back home we're not really taught financial literacy like that 
so when you step into this world it's kind of shocking like you know you want to do it but you don't know where to start or you f you have these limiting beliefs because it's just something that you're not normally taught or that you don't normally hear of you know i don't know if you get what i'm saying guys like you know when you grow up just knowing that you can make money easily this is someone who feels like they have to work hard and do all these things to make money they have to be in a job they have to have graduated to make money those kind of two people these two people are so different in the way they are wired and i feel like a lot of us in africa have this mentality that yeah the degree and all of that will get you there yes it will get you there but it will not get you to a point where you are ultimately free of any financial like strains you know when you're living your best life and you're not watching over your back to check your bank account to see if you're still good i feel like this mentality of just you can do it all like you can invest you can make money in your sleep if you learn the right skills is a good one but it's not really taught so moving here has made me realize that like it's like i've had an awakening <laughs> That there's definitely a mentality that we have back home that is not very financially liberating but it's not anyone's fault i just feel like it needs to just be taught more like once other people i feel like people do though the ones who get that financial freedom do try to teach like on youtube i see like a lot of financial bunnies but because we we don't even know it's not our culture we don't usually support such people or if we do we just watch them and that's it we don't really go into detail and follow what they're saying but some of them are scams as well so <laughs> now that's a whole different topic but anyway all i'm saying is that moving here has taught me that people are making it out there without having their degrees but of course i also need to acknowledge that i wouldn't have been in the same position to be able to move here without a critical skill degree so i still needed it to come to a, to this country but as i'm here i'm realizing that people are making it without the degree people who work less than me are making more if you get what i mean so i think of it as a positive and not a negative like i know some people will be like yeah but i work so hard i'm so angry at the world blah, blah, blah. no that's not me i'm looking at it as okay fine i see how the world is working i see how things are i can eventually break out of this limiting belief one day and be able to be free financially and yeah so that's one thing i like about being in london it forces you to to crack out of your comfort zone crack out of those limiting beliefs that you didn't even know you had so yeah i think that is the last point that i'm gonna make and to conclude i do not regret moving here i feel like it's a once in a lifetime opportunity like you get it and you jump for it and you just take a leap of faith and the thing is you're not bound to be here forever like you don't have to be you know you can come here try and if it's not for you it's not for you but if it's for you then if you didn't try you would have never known so i would advise people to take the leap of faith honestly because if it doesn't work you can always go back but if you don't do it you will regret i have a lot of my mom's friends that were like oh i also had this opportunity but i didn't take it like a lot of people who are now in my field like auditors it's a critical skill so they're really recruiting it they've been recruiting for years right but people back then if they had a nice job or they wouldn't come here which was fine because things were substantially better back then back in the days in south africa right but as things are getting worse and worse people are more inclined to come this side but now the people that have maybe reason in their positions and they're looking at you you're freshly qualified and you're like i'm going to london they're like you know what i wish i had done that just for the experience but now they feel like it's too late so yeah i urge you to just you know you know think about it of course consider all the things i've told you that it's not gonna be easy it's not gonna be a walk in the park especially if you're someone who's used to some things being a certain way it's gonna it's not gonna be a walk in the park but it's just gonna be a learning experience that you're gonna be like yes i did it and i loved it and i came back home or yes i did it and i loved it and i stayed so yeah that's how i'm gonna conclude this video if you love this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and comment down below what are your thoughts 
what are you considering if you have any more questions for me leave them down below and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video